Yeah. Okay. Wait, I did not. What was that? I did not say it was okay to record. Did you just sit, see oh, with the lights? Oh, just see. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, they won't see. Yeah, you're not, they're not seeing you. Okay. So, okay. you want to? Yeah, I can, I can start. Okay, you can start. Yeah. Okay, so welcome everybody. This is Board School and Bubbly with One Hope and Pamper Chuck. Um, so I'm Jenna and I am with One Hope. Um, and we are going to start this by kicking off with um, how to create a perfect um, little charcuterie board here because you have to have food to pair with your wine, right? <laughs> so we are going to start off with that. Um, while Jen is getting some things together, I will just um, talk a little bit about One Hope. So we are a cause-centric winery. Has anybody heard of One Hope or had some before? No. Okay, so some and some, some have not. Um, so like I said, we are a cause-centric winery, which means that we give back Sorry. to nonprofits what? through every single bottle of wine sold. So we are literally dollars away from hitting eight million dollars so you all could be a part of that tonight so eight million dollars in give back that is to both local and global nonprofits so that's pretty exciting um every single bottle of wine that we sell helps to make an impact and what's very very cool is that the host of an event gets to choose a nonprofit that they would like to give an additional 10% back to so in total about half of your bottles are giving back to causes around the world Okay, we give back to health, hunger, clean water, and education. Okay, and then the host gets to choose an additional nonprofit on top of that. Um, so we are right in the heart of Napa Valley. We are on Highway 29. Has anybody been to Napa before? No. So we are right across from Mandavi Vineyard. Um, Robert Mandavi Jr. Um, actually is one of our winemakers, along with um, Mari Wells Coyle, who came from Sterling Vineyard, another really popular winery out there. Um, so we, um, I just visited our winery a couple months ago and it's absolutely gorgeous. We just became a physical winery back in last year, actually. So we've been in the winemaking business, um, since 2007, we became part of you know, the drug sales world in 2016, but then our physical winery opened up to the public just last year. So now you can actually go and visit the winery. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so you can see over there, I have one hope building case for our cause, 10% to the nonprofit. And you can read a little bit more about how we give on that, um, in that frame right there. Um, so tonight we're going to be taking you through a series of six wines. We have about 40 different varietals of wine. So what's cool is the host gets to pick six. In this case, I brought the wine. So I picked some of my favorites and some wines that I thought would really showcase well with a charcuterie board. Um, so I highly recommend that you take notes. The reason for that is because by the time you get to wine number three, you might not remember exactly what it is that you tried. Um, you're only getting about an ounce for, but there are some wines here that we are going to try as sangrias or, um, you know, all, all kinds of things here. So it is a good idea just to jot down some notes. And I'm also going to give you some suggestions of other wines that you might like if you like a particular wine. Um, how many of you are more sweet wine drinkers? Okay, so I'm not a little bit half of you. And then dry, everybody else is dry. So we're kind of split. So that's why. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I show, I'm going to tell you a couple ways that you can turn our drier wines into sangrias and things like that. Okay. Um, so what we'll do, I think what we'll do. If, you tell yeah. them what it's going to tonight. You can do that. You want to go oh, ahead and tell yeah. Them. So if you are purchasing wine tonight, um, it's actually helping along the way. So every um, everybody here, except for maybe Tina. So it's a, a local nonprofit that helps single moms get childcare uh, overnight for like third um, third shift, right? Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah third, it's just third care. shift, right? I think so. It's just overnight childcare. Yeah, so awesome. that's what it's for. Yeah, so I didn't know that. Yeah. Lots of ways to make an impact with wine. Who would have thought, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you take it over. We're going to okay. move. You can move this screen down so people that are on, watching online can watch you build yeah. this board. Um, but yeah, take yeah. it away. So, um, so some of you have seen this before. I am by no means there's like there's I don't think there's a 
such thing as a professional charcuterie maker, and I'm definitely not claiming to be one. So um, it's really, I'm going to tilt this this way, actually. So it's really um, just kind of what it ends up being what your personal preference is of what you like to eat, what you can find for your budget, what you can, hello, um, what you can find for Oh, somebody else is coming. Hello. Maybe. Oh, some of your people. Yes. Oh, I'm just going to admit all. Yeah. So we're actually Zooming for any guest of, of both of our businesses that wants to join, but also our teams, like to give them some ideas on training um, for, so like her team is joining so they can get an idea of how to do their own wine tastings. And some people on my team are joining uh, for the same thing with charcuterie and that sort of thing. So, um, so what I typically try to do is pick things that I can afford because this can get pricey. I always recommend Aldi. I do not get paid from Aldi to recommend <laughs> them. But and I second that. I yeah. Agree. Um, but I think I, I know all you here are familiar with Aldi and um, I have found it is the best place to get all these fun things. I still usually end up getting way more than I intended to and spending more than I intended to. But um, so I did actually choose things tonight that Jenna recommended that will match up well with the wines that she brought. And so she's going to walk us through that part of it. I'm just going to show you how to quickly put this together and just some things that I have found to be helpful when it comes to building a board and making it look cool and, you know, super impressive, even though it may not have taken you as long as your friends think. So, um, <laughs> So, and I will point out Gwen's beautiful, sweet board that she created all by herself. Oh, yeah. I can't really tilt it very well, but it's and throughout it's the there. tasting, she did. Will, she did do it. We will throughout the tasting. I'll tell you which desserts and which. So we tried to kind of come up with like a savory option and a sweet option. So to pair with each wine. So, yeah. So um, I do, if you're interested in any Pampers Chef stuff, I did put catalogs in the living room and then I have a few things up here. I'm not going to demo a ton, um, but it's all available to ask questions about and that sort of thing. So um, first when I'm doing this, I try to put my height on the board first. So uh, what I'm using is the acacia wood cutting board. This one actually needs sanded and oiled. So like a butcher block, you would treat this the same way. It is made out of acacia wood, so that means it's antimicrobial. So you're not harboring bacteria in this. You know, um, I had somebody who recently got it as a host and was concerned because her husband cut raw meat on here. And she was texting me and I was like, it's okay, don't worry about it. Just wash it and it'll be totally fine. So um, plus it just makes a really nice board, especially if it is nice and oiled, unlike this one. <laughs> Um, so I try to do my height first and I always use the microwave egg cooker. It's solid white. We can take the silicone sleeve off. This is what you would use to like put your eggs in commute to work. It fits in your cup holder. You can do it like baked oatmeal in here. You can do like a mug muffin, whatever, but it works really well for stuff like this. So I'm just going to set aside the silicone sleeve and the, um, the lid. And then I got these fun bread sticks to go in there. So there's some good height. Oops, there's a treat for the dogs. <laughs> they, know um, they know it. So, and I don't usually ever put that in the middle. I like to off center things. I don't like things to be super symmetrical, as you can tell by the way I have stuff all over the house. Um, so, I'm going to put a bunch of cheese on here. I actually don't recommend getting as many cheeses as I did. Um, the reason I did is because I was excited that the ones I could find at Aldi were actually ones that matched up with all of the wines. But if you're doing a board at home, I usually say get like one to two hard cheeses, one to two soft cheeses for a total of like maybe three or two or three cheeses total on your board, just depending on, you know, what, just because you're going to want room for so many other things. So I'm going to probably put half of these on for now and we can reload it if we need to. Um, but I'm going to put a white cheddar. So after I put my height on, I put the big chunks of the big chunks of um, <laughs> cheeses on. So I kind of like put the size on next. This is Manchego. So we have a white cheddar, a Manchego, a mango Stilton, right? Yup. And an Aguda. And a brie. And a brie. 
Yeah, so. <laughs> Super excited. Um, and you could really get into slicing these. So I have my cheese knife here. You could slice them. I'm not gonna do it just for sake of time. I'll just show you a couple. Slice them really thin. I don't know what kind of hungry though. <laughs> well, there's plenty here. I'm just saying I'm not gonna make it like super it fancy. Does the it is. slicer um have different like it has the little pick at the end for picking up like meats and but I mean does it have different widths? It doesn't. Okay. No, it does not have different widths. Yeah. Yeah. Um let me put the just so I don't forget, this one was the man yeah. yeah. What's that? Can you use it as a knife? Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can use it as so a knife. Okay. The cheddar. It's actually not three year cheddar, but I already had that one made. So it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the Gouda, which I also really like. Gouda. I love Gouda. It's very it's so good. It's very good. Mm, and it oh. smells cheesy and gouda y. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're like, that smells like something I Jackson. like. Jackson. Jackson, you are a problem. He is a problem. Guess who can open up a box of pizza while it's sitting on the kitchen counter when nobody else is around to witness? <laughs> Jackson can. I'm guessing it wasn't patch. <laughs> Jackson can Considering she was upstairs with us the whole time, no, it sure was it not. <laughs> nope, it was definitely Jack. Um, yeah, so these, these come with our charcuterie accessory set, which is up here on the Lazy Susan. I'm not using the Lazy Susan tonight because it's pretty small. Um, and I have a lot I want to put on here. So, but it comes with these two bowls, which I am going to use tonight, two spoons to go with each individual, whatever you put in there. And then a bunch of different spreaders and cheese knives and these little picks with the little um, labels come with it too. And then you can just write your own stuff on there. All right, so I put the... You want hey, that? I said I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're earning host benefits if anybody buys Pampered Chefs. Yeah. Always get it. All right. So this is the. <laughs> yes. Swap the goods. Yep. Oh. You said it. Eight million. Are you eight million. Given away. Yes. Bro, there's too many drinkers in this one. <laughs> eight million. Dollars. Eight million dollars. And they get ten percent of each bottle. They've given away eight million dollars to different nonprofits. From that's incredible. That's on the line, right? Hey, you know what? It's a huge, it's a huge industry. All right, so now I'm doing prosciutto, which also goes well with something we're we're um having tonight. Prosciutto is, I mean, it's really easy to not do anything to it and just pile it up. It makes pretty little ribbons. It's really good on a boat. That's right. Um, I actually also sometimes will pull it in half like that and just make smaller ones because you probably won't want the huge, the whole huge. When you grab it, you probably don't want that whole huge piece. So, uh, a really easy recipe or appetizer recipe, if you want one up your sleeve for the holidays, is to wrap, tear these into little tiny strips like this. Um, Wrap it around a piece of asparagus, put it in your air fryer for like six minutes. Done. Delish. No seasoning required. It is amazing. Um, okay, so prosciutto, I'm just piling it up to look nice and fluffy. I don't know if you should, if you, if meat is fluffy, maybe don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, so that's a chunk. I'm going to put my bowls on before I put anything else. So again, I started with the height, then the bigger pieces of things, and then the bowls. And again, I don't like to have everything super symmetrical. So I kind of just spread it around. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a salami rose. Oh, I can't wait. Do the pepperoni one. Why? <laughs> I want to see it's the same thing, only much smaller. Maybe I can make one if we're, I'll make one later to put on here. Salami rose. I do have 
So what I'm doing, so for the salami, I just bought this pre-sliced stuff from Aldi. I'm just putting a nice little pile of it where I'm gonna put the flour at just so there's more on here. Um, I like these slices because they're really thin. So if you're gonna make a flour, you do want something that's really thinly sliced. Um, and then you just need a wine glass. You have lots of those. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna take your slices and you're gonna just fold them around the rim of the glass. So this, these size slices, it's usually like three. <laughs> so fun. You don't know how to do this? No, I've done it with a shot glass before. Yeah, with the pepperoni. Not with wine glass. So if you're using pepperonis, you can do the same thing with a shot glass and it'll make little tiny rosettes. They're so cute. All right, so that's, um, so what I did is I put three around and now I'm going around and putting another three over top. And then I'm going around again, putting another three. So you're kind of just covering where the previous ones are overlapping. You're kind of covering that area, making a new layer. And I usually try to do four. Ooh, I think that's gonna be perfect. Um, sometimes if they're thicker or they're really cold, they'll try to spring back open. Mm -hmm. So you just like really pinch it at the top and fold it good. You see it in there? Mm -hmm. I see it. It looks like the Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Like it does with the rose glass. in the glass. And then you just kind of twist that carefully off Whoa. of there. So pretty. It's, it's a wide. beautiful meat flower. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine like getting yeah, a bouquet of those? There's somebody out there who would enjoy that. Okay, so that's our meat. So the prosciutto salami. So again, we started with height. Then I put the big chunks of things, um, which were the cheeses. Then I'm putting the bowls on because those are also large. Uh, and then the meat. If you were doing a cluster of grapes, I would highly recommend putting that on probably before any of the chunks of cheese, just so that it's on there because they tend to kind of like, bleh, you know, so. Yeah. Um, so get those on. And then all I do is kind of fill in all around the cracks with whatever else I have a few pickles here and I'm just going to keep those in that little bowl. It's not the prettiest, but, um, they won't spill over. I have some nice olives here. Um, I have this Italian bread. That's actually a pampered chef mix. Um, a bread mix. So I made that this afternoon. I've not made it. It's a newer one. I haven't made it yet. So we'll be trying it together. Um, and when I'm filling in with everything else, I really just load it up and then I'll go back over and I'll just like continue piling. So sometimes I will just like this prosciutto, I can make that taller. I have a little left. I will kind of place things and then I'll go back and like put another layer on top or whatever, but just kind of get the initial placement. Like if I wasn't sure where I wanted to put these figs, I might just lay a couple, you know, like put them in here, but you know, not put a whole lot. Cause if I have to move them, I don't want to move like a whole cup of figs. Same with the dates. If I wasn't sure I could just kind of shove a few in here. Um, something that's super helpful is if you are using pepperoni, you can put it around the edges. If you have a board that doesn't have an edge, like Gwen used our stone platter, which has an edge, so she didn't have to worry about stuff falling off. But if I had like nuts or olives or something that I didn't want to roll off, I could just put like a little line of pepperoni here. So I know you guys can't see very well, but it's no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, <laughs> it's just three pepperoni in a line, like slightly overlapping flat. That's all I did right on the edge of the board. So it will prevent things from rolling off. It kind of creates like a not a slip surface, I guess. I don't really know. Um, so I'll do that sometimes too. So like if I wanted to put these olives here and just pile them up in this spot, but I was afraid they're gonna roll off. I'd see, there we go, the pepperoni already stopped one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can put them on the pepperoni. They can be over the pepperoni too. Um, it's not necessarily a decorative border. However, it does help add some, some um, 
stability. St well, some, uh, yeah. it kind of helps fill in the cracks visually too, you yeah. know? So, um, where do you put your crackers? Yeah. So the crackers, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good one. So I got these, we have the, we already have the breadsticks and we have this pile of bread. And then the only other thing I got were these Christini things. So again, it's really easy to keep loading your cart at the store if you're seeing all this fun stuff, <laughs> but realistically think about, okay, I don't need four different kinds of crackers. I don't need seven different kinds of cheese. You certainly can. I mean, you, I could cover this entire island yeah. into a huge yeah. charcuterie board with seven different cheeses and a bunch of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can do that, but if oh, you're, cool. yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> But if you're looking for something that fits on something like this to serve at like, you know, your Christmas Eve or whatever, um, you don't need that many. So again, um, one to two soft cheeses, one to two hard cheeses, um, one to two meats. And then I usually say something sweet, like a sweet spread, maybe a savory spread. So I have my stone ground mustard, my red pepper jelly. Um, the figs are great sweet. Your grapes are a great one. Grapes go really good with like any cheese, super good. Um, and then of course, if you're pairing, um, olives. yes, definitely olives. You do, like, olives. You do nuts. Yeah. I have walnuts here, um, that I'll just kind of sprinkle around like as a little garnish, but, um, you could do greens like rosemary or like yeah and if i have different colors i try to evenly balance those two so like if i have a bunch of green stuff and i i don't want to concentrate them all on one corner of the board i kind of try to put them you know not super symmetrical but <laughs> kind of balance them out a little bit um that's pretty much it so hopefully it's helpful and not overwhelming hopefully you can see how this is something that you could do um, for your own uh, parties, but also those of you who are on my team. Um, hopefully this is something that you feel like you could be confident in offering for your, your parties, whether they're in person or um, online, like a Zoom like this, or even a Facebook Live. Uh, and just know that there really is no professional proper way. If you want to get super professional, tell your friends, your your um, guests at your parties, whatever that charcuterie actually means cold cooked meats. So <laughs> that's pointless knowledge for you to have. <laughs> um, this board right here is technically not a charcuterie board because it does not have cold cooked meats on it. So we're calling it a sweet board. You can obviously call these charcuterie boards. Nobody's going to care. But um, that's just a fun fact. Like grazing boards are like the, yeah, the craze. Right. Like if you're doing like wings for yeah. game night or a waffle board mm -hmm. or snacks for kids after school. I've Hot seen that. Board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That's awesome. I'm just yeah. going to show everybody who's on here. Yeah. I'm just going to keep piling like. this up so you can see, but it looks really pretty. You can see there's just different oh. um, little signs. <laughs> We'll yeah, put this I'm back just, over here. I'm just gonna fill in the spaces and just load it up. So, and while she's doing that, I think what I'll do is pour your first wine. So, for those of you who just hopped on the Zoom, I already talked a little bit briefly about you know one whole history and what we've done with our almost eight million dollars in give back. Um, and you're raising money for what was it the club again? Um, along the way. Along the way tonight. So 10% of your purchases are going to go to along the way. And I want everybody to think about who you might need gifts for. Okay. So whether it be teachers, neighbors, <laughs> other than ourselves. I mean, it's the best gift ever to gift yourself wine, right? Um, but yeah, think about all those people in your life that you could okay. use gift for. Any gatherings that you might be either going to or attending that where you need wine because wine brings people together right so yeah, yeah just like food <laughs> right food and wine so that's entirely why um besides the give back component why our founders created one health because wine gives bring people together so um it makes it a really fun way to gather with friends um and celebrate um so we're going to kick this off with our sparkling light. 
And what did I do with the sparkling? Oh, you I put, put it in there. there. Those oh, are. Do you want to talk about this? Those are no longer. We don't sell those anymore. <laughs> this would be super helpful. I know. <laughs> so I won't be talking right. about them, actually. Well, they would be very helpful. They would. I forget to use them. So yeah. All right. So we're gonna start with our um, vintner sparkling brew. Should they? Do you want them to come and like? put stuff on a plate but not I, eat it yet and then we, can, unless you want to put it in the center i could put them in the center if i can even so, carry that so. over there i know it's up to you whatever you want to do maybe take a center one <laughs> <laughs> everybody <laughs> don't won't be able to reach it that's okay i'll come over and get you come over and get it we won't fight do you want to get some Doni before they? I put okay. It okay. 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 Right. There's extra. So, on the table. Right. So the sweet what we'll do is we are for those of you who are on here, we're kind of just shifting locations here. So I'm gonna. Oh, so let me tell you quick what is on. All right. So the Italian brand Doni is the Italian brand Doni. So the Italian brand is this mix here. If anybody's interested in seeing what the ingredients are, or if you're even interested in this is not. The brownies are gluten free. No, I just, I just need. Are they really? I need are you joking? The brownies are gluten free. No way. I need gluten free brownies. Um, the brownie rates are the breakfast brownie mix here. The bread is the caramel latte bread mix here. So, what is this one? <laughs> Anybody else want to look at these? <laughs> brownies, brownies are gluten free. Yeah. They're made with garbanzo hi. bean flour. Oh, hi. Okay. I'm convinced that so we're going to do our best to get this um, charcuterie board over here. <laughs> hi, Amanda. Uh, good for you. Um, if you want to grab yourself a tasting note sheet and a pen. Oh, we walk around freaking out. Now. Okay, you did it. And I did it. Yeah. Wait, here, hold on. Let's take a picture before we yeah. We should take absolutely take a picture. Oh, thank you. We and should put a couple of bottles. <laughs> Excuse me, those of you who are on here, we're just gonna save the fun little picture real quick. So just hang tight. I'm gonna put um some bottles around. Okay, yeah. I'm really you grab a glass for me. I should be better at <laughs> <laughs> You know, for us Instagram loving people that <laughs> Ashley, whenever we're taking pictures of our meeting, like she's on my camera chef team, and whenever we have a meeting and we have all the food and stuff out, she's always giving me crap for how what my, my composition is with the picture that I'm taking. I'm like, then you do it. She's saying graphics. That's true. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can taste one. Not the one. Not the one. <laughs> well, she can. Yes, Gwen. And Gwen is my pampered chef assist assistant, by the way. Yeah, you do your she, um, I'll all steal your picture. <laughs> I just recently hired her to do for a small fee so she can start earning a pet budget. Hey, Melody. For her pet's needs. Yeah. Hi, Melody needs. Mary. <laughs> so here's she what our table can looks do like. things for me that are like non into producing so she can like labels on so pretty okay so we are ready to get started with um our tasting and please feel free to help yourself to whatever snacks you want to, to get i'll kind of help you along the way with what pairs with what so the walnuts go with something too so i tried i think almost everything on here except for like maybe the jelly the mustard i tried to make <laughs> oh so yeah so it's really fun <laughs> look at you <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're ready to get started who's ready to drink i need a nap I just got Do you have a glass? So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I need a glass. Here, I got napkins. Okay. <laughs> so yes, we are going to it. kick this off with our bubbly. Um, we're going to try this in a couple different ways. Okay. So I'm going to first let you try this by itself, and then I am going to give you the option of choosing a. Um, cranberry juice if you want if you want to turn that into 
something else. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, like I mentioned before, um, One Hope has several, we have about 40 wines um, in our portfolio, and several of them are award winning. So, this is a 90 point award winning sparkling brew. Um, if you're not aware, <laughs> For those of you who say that you love bubbly, is anybody a bubbly fan? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Um, you actually can, a lot of people say you don't have yeah, champagne. Oh, Does anybody know why we don't have champagne? I do. <laughs> it, it has to come from the champagne region. Yeah, well. exactly. So while we don't have champagne per se, we do have sparkling wine. And that is because it does not come from champagne. Luscious pear and tropical aromas. Again, super simple. I am literally reading the back of the bottle. Okay. So that is one thing that I love about our bottles. Your tasting facts are going to be right on the back, which makes it super easy to gift and super easy to pair with things. Um, you know, if you don't remember what it is you bought tonight, <laughs> go ahead, look at the back of the bottle. Um, we also have an amazing blog on our site. So if you go to onehubwine.com and go down to the blog, You'll see recipes, you'll see cocktails, you'll see sangrias, all different ways to use the wine. Um, and if you go to the website, you'll see pairing notes as well. Okay, so lots of fun things. So you're, I'm taking you through a traditional Napa Valley wine tasting. So I'm bringing Napa Valley to you, starting with the sparkling group. Now, if you are taking a look at your gorgeous boards that are right in front of you, um, we have a, gorgeous those are. They are gorgeous. They are. Um, <laughs> so a couple things that you might want to pair with this sparkling root would be um, the chocolate covered berries and the brie. Okay. So try to come up with a cheese and something, um, you know, more of a sweeter end that you could try with this. I'm going to just be giving you a splash of each wine. So you might be sitting there thinking like six wines up a lot. But it's really not. You're getting a little ounce pour. There will be wine left over at the end if you want to come back and try anything. Um, so, <laughs> does anybody know the four S's of wine tasting? Simple, sweet, <laughs> sexy, and scrumptious. <laughs> I mean, they sound really good. But... <laughs> does anybody have any idea? Uh, smelling, smelling would be one of them. Yeah, smelling would be one. Sight, swirl, swirl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, does it have legs? The first one has to be swirl. Okay. You want to swirl it, sniff it. Oh, right. Smell it, and then sip it. Oh, are we supposed to do that last one? So, are we supposed to sip and taste at the same time? No, you're supposed to just sip it. And then what does it swallow? Fourth one. <laughs> for, well, you just sip it first. <laughs> Not trust yeah. it. Just sip it first. And then the fourth one would be savor. And I just made that up. So um, <laughs> for real, though, I just made it up. Um, and that's because I think that there is a huge difference on how you feel about wine depending upon what you pair with. So that's why I love pairing wines with certain foods because you get a completely different taste when you pair with foods. So the reason why you sip it first is because you want to get those flavors in your mouth. Then put whatever you're pairing with it in your mouth and sip over top of that on your second sip. And you will get a completely different experience doing it that way. Try it a little bit with the sweeter option of the, um, the berry, the chocolate covered berry. And then also try it with the brie. Do we have knives for the um yeah. for the cheese? For the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The brie. Here. Yeah. Yep. So definitely um, is that is that really brie? pretty wedge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. And what's fun about this is that whatever you're gonna taste in that wine is completely different than whatever you're gonna taste in that wine. So that's why we this tend to have conversations around wine shutter. because you're all gonna yeah, taste something completely different. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so would a plain wine tasting be different than a wine pairing? Yes. Yeah, because you would just go in like if you if you were to walk into our winery in Napa and you were just to go taste the wine, we have different experiences, right? So sometimes when you go into a winery, you strictly just taste the wine. Sometimes when you go into a winery, you get the you know extended experience of pairing. So different wineries will offer different pairings. Sometimes you'll do a chocolate pairing. Sometimes you'll do a cheese pairing or small bites. So it will change the taste of what you're getting out of the wine based on what you eat. Okay. So yeah, so try that. Um, when you're finished with your initial glass, then I want to just briefly show you how to turn it into a fun winter cocktail. So I'm just going to give you a second splash of this one. So, okay. Do you put the fun. food in your mouth and then take a sip? Yes. Okay. And you leave the food in your mouth. <laughs> and what's really neat about doing Anybody something like that, I know it's kind of strange to do, but if you kind of, I remember when I was in Napa and they said, you know, move the wine around your mouth. And the reason why you do that is because you have different taste buds. So depending on where that wine or the food hits your you know, those taste buds, you're going to get something completely different out of it. And that's why some people will say gargle with your wine because <laughs> it will move around your mouth and you're going to get something else out of it. Um, so this one right here is the perfect mimosa wine, um, the, the, the sparkling brew. So it's a great one to have on hand for this time of year. You know, I envision, um, for me at least, Christmas morning, it's mimosa time, um, you know, New Year's Eve. Let's not be partial every yeah. morning. Every morning, right? Every morning. I mean, you can hurt feelings here. Yeah, every morning. There is, you know, Monday mimosa, you know, any, really any day that ends in one, right? I need to get it up. Um, if you haven't met me before, you'll know that I'm obsessed with themed events. So um, I just came up with a merry mimosa party for this month. So that would be where you do a strictly bubbly tasting, all the bubblies, and then we do different holiday cocktails. So if you have any reason to do that with any friends, please invite me. <laughs> so much more merrier than it was before. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a lot of really cool things you do. Um, we have a blue version of recipe that has like um, blue curacao. <laughs> And that's called like a Jack Frost mimosa. Um, you could do a little apple cider. You could rim your glass with cinnamon sugar. Mm. A little splash of apple cider in there. You some can cinnamon. put some um, caramel vodka in there even if you want to kick it up a notch a little bit. Um, one of my favorite time things for this time of year would be a little splash of cranberry juice. Or you could do like a little frozen cranberries in there and a sprig of rosemary. It's just really pretty. So if you have any holiday, you know, event to go to, that's something that you could do. Um, so I'm just going to actually do that. So we're going to, do you want to follow me with the cranberry juice? And just mm -hmm. like, if you want to try what it's like with just a little splash of cranberry juice. Um, now, the reason why I do this is so that you can see, like, maybe you don't like just, you know, just plain juice. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can, and some people like more juice. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes when you go to restaurants, you get more orange juice in your mimosa. I like more bubbly. In my mimosa. <laughs> I like just a splash. So um, sometimes people, you know, have different choices. I feel like I should pass the bottle back there. Good. Yeah. So. Sorry. Lots of really fun things you can do with this. Um, I'm going to put, for those of you who are on, yeah, you can see the brute. And then I love to show this whole line of wine. Um, if you love the sparkling brute, um, we did just actually sell out of these just not too long ago, but keep this in mind for the future. We have them in many bottles so you, they can but, get 12 you don't have them now. we don't have oh, them right okay. the second they've just sold out um <laughs> we, <laughs> have <laughs> sure. we do have a tasting flight still available which has all the four little small mini bottles that you can get which is a great gift um but just be thinking about like, this is a great opportunity to get gifts i do have little holiday gift tags here that are made up for you so if you want to take as many that you need gifts for you can do that um but if you love glitter, you love a little bling in your life, um, <laughs> shimmer, 
we do have our sparkling brew that you're trying right now in um, glitter and shimmer bottles. So this is just showing you some of the options that are available. So right now we have a thankful for you. This is our silver shimmer. This is painted on. So this is an etched bottle right here. And then we have a holiday cheers, which is really cute. We have a sleigh all day, which is somewhere on that table with a little flyer. Um, this one just actually came out. So it's brand new. This is a happy new year. Okay, so that's our gold shimmer. So this is a great one to bring in the new year. Um, this one right here is our home sweet home bottle and it normally comes in silver. But um, what I love about this is that this makes an amazing client gift. So if you know of anybody that's a realtor, um, a lot of them put their logo directly on the bottle here. So our, our shimmer bottles actually are great gifting items for anyone who really owns a business, anyone that does gifting, right? So you can actually take silver or gold bottles. You can either use the sayings that we have on the bottles or you can completely create a custom bottle of your own. Um, putting your logo on here, put any sayings on here that you want. When the bottle is finished, you can actually get a strand of mini lights and you can put it inside as a decoration. So you can see here, there's like different options. They can like flash. So I know personally, we moved about a year ago and I got a Tiffany bowl and flowers, which was nice, but the flowers died in two days. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, a permanent structure in our house, which is now a decoration. So um, this is just showing you one way to really create a unique gift. And the cool thing about this too, is that your gifting gives back. So you can say that all of your gifts give back. Um, there is other ways that you can completely create a bottle of your own. Um, I always share this particular bottle because this is my why. This is the reason why I do what I do. So this one right here says, love you past the moon, miss, miss you beyond the stars. Um, this is a custom bottle that I had created in memory of my son. He was born premature um, 10 years ago. So he was born at 23 weeks and passed away. And um, every year on his birthday, we try to do something to give back. So what, what I personally thought of was to get a case of these um, shimmer bottles. And then, then we delivered them on his birthday to moms in the area who also lost babies. Mm -hmm. So this is something um, today I actually sat down for the, for the first time. And it was something that I've been, been really weighing on my heart to start my own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been saying I'm going to do it. I'm saying I'm going to do it. Um, I've been doing a lot of things going towards it, but today I really sat down and actually like wrote a mission statement. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's going to become a major part of my life because I plan on using these bottles in the future. And then, you know, really funneling all purchases that are made through this business of mine into the nonprofit to help siblings who are going through um, grief for the loss of a, a sibling. So that's my, my ultimate plan and the reason why I do this. Um, to date, I've been able to help, um, you know, hosts of either myself or other hosts give back just about $12,000 now um, in two and a half short years. So your wine really can make an impact. <laughs> I know a lot of people just say, I'm going to just go to the liquor store and buy whatever wine looks pretty. Um, and while you can do that, just know that your wine, you know, bottle by bottle can make a huge impact on this world. Um, just by the $8 million that I said. I know it seems like a lot, but we've built three schools. Um, we've just really fed a lot of children, helped a lot of pets get adopted, helped, you know, over 20, I think almost 25,000 local nonprofits. So really it does a lot of good through drinking. So you can feel good about it. <laughs> feel good about what you're drinking when you're drinking one hope wine. <laughs> um, so what do we think about the mimosa? I love mimosa. It's good. Yeah. I mean, traditional orange juice is great, right? But this is just showing you a festive way. Put a little rosemary, a couple of cranberries in there. It's called a poinsettia, um, right? Poinsettia. Yeah. It is. Yep, it's called a poinsettia. I don't normally like it. But... Yeah. Poinsettia. Sometimes it can be too sweet, I kind of feel like. Or some of this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, it's so good. Now, where are you getting your juice in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you love um, bubbly, um, if you like the sparkling brew, definitely write down the Italian Prosecco. The Italian Prosecco is another favorite among many people. Um, and if you're a sweeter wine drinker, we do have uh, the sparkling Moscato. So it's a sparkling version of our sweet Moscato. Um, it's definitely something to try. Um, it's unique. And all of our wines, I have um, four of these on the table. These are just ring little 
you know, almost like a catalog that I put together. So this gives you a good idea of all the wines that we do carry. Um, our Italian Prosecco is pear, green apple, and light and fresh bubbles. So it's very similar in flavor to the sparkling brew, but just a tad bit lighter, I would say. So if you like something like this, that's a really great way, um, good option to go with. This also on the back here is the wine profile tasting menu that I made up. So this will tell you by category what wines fit in each category. So if you like, if you know you love bubbly, it tells you here what bubbly there are medium body breads, you know, full body breads. So if you're tasting something tonight and want to take a chance on it, very much similarly to how you would just walk into a liquor store and pick out a bottle because it was pretty, um, <laughs> that you could do something like that here and, you know, be a little adventurous and try some new things. Um, so that brings me to our second white. Um, and that's going to be our Chardonnay. Okay. So I had a tasting at a pet store last night and I brought this along with me. It was, it was really nice. It was, they dimmed the lights and I partnered up with an Italian baker and they did um, baked good, you know, Italian treats with, with my wine. So that's really fun too. So we tried this, this is the hospitality Chardonnay. Um, we have several different Chardonnays, but this one here is the one with the mountains. Um, and this one is part of our hospitality collection, which means that this was created for restaurants. So back before COVID started, we um, came out with a hospitality line of wine, and there are four of them. Their plan was to distribute it to a very small select number of restaurants. And then when COVID happened, they couldn't, restaurants were closed, so they couldn't do that. So they opened it up to us. Um, so this is not going to be your traditional Chardonnay. Does anybody love Chardonnay? Anybody hate Chardonnay? I always thought I hated Chardonnay. And then I tried this one. Um, this is not an oaky Chardonnay. It's not buttery. It's more exotic in flavors. This is pineapple, baked apple, banana, and toasted coconut. So you're, if you're not getting traditional Chardonnay flavors out of this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pour this one for you. Um, with this one, Again, I would say to stick with more of the softer cheeses. Um, we have the Manchego. Um, we have the, the Sultan with mango. Um, I think she, is it mango? Yeah. Mango and ginger on that side. And I can, Still, um, I have more over here. Yeah. So those are the ones that you're going to try with this. It also pairs well with pears um, for future reference. In case you want to know. Um, I love this with seafood. So sometimes, you know, I feel like, it's been hard with, I have a one-year-old and a six-year-old. We don't have babysitters, so we create our own date nights. So we will get seafood, we'll get you know pasta, some veggies, and we'll make like a seafood pasta dish, and we'll put this in there. And it pairs very well because to me, it's a little bit more exotic. You get that like coconut flavor. Um, so I really do enjoy this with any seafood dishes. Ooh, seafood. How long would you say the bubbly holds up? Like if you're the only person in your house who drinks it and you're not <laughs> going to do you, the whole one. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, funny you should ask, awesome. you know, we have a really nice awesome. champagne. Yeah, let's yeah. bring that out. Let's show, yeah. you know, let's show people how to yeah, work that. Let's try, try this one because she's not here. <laughs> Consultant. So do it in the, in the But I know video. she's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> here, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> A champagne stopper, pampered chef. Literally, just you flip out the sides, <laughs> put it over. Cheap stuff. It. It usually lasts for about three to oh, yeah seven days or, or however long I it's was, in the fridge. I <laughs> See, I I would say like no more than. Three. I don't really go no more than. Three. I mean, like just because. And then you just kind of push it down, open it back up. I can push. Yeah. Oh. That's it. So yeah. you're just pushing down, letting the sides clamp on. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And we do also have one in our um, celebration. It's similar. You just push it straight down. Okay. So that's something definitely that you're going to want to use if you are preserving it. I have a horror story of a champagne bottle in my refrigerator. I had somebody one time stick it sideways when it was open with the stopper. I opened my fridge and the whole thing flew in my face. So I just, luckily I didn't lose any, you know, nothing. Yeah. But the, the, the actual bubbly, like it's sparkling wine flew in my face. So always try to keep it upright. Even when you're getting your bottles and you're chilling them. Um, a really nice quick tip. I don't know if anybody has ever been in a situation. I mean, 
I, it happens to me all the time where let's say you're really craving that bottle, you forget to put it in the fridge and you have nothing that's cold to drink. Anybody ever been in that situation? <laughs> well, I have. Um, but if you've ever been in that situation and you need something chilled very quickly, you just take a wet paper towel and you put it around the base of the bottle, stick it in the freezer. And for bubbly, you want to make sure it's upright. Um, and in about 15 minutes, you'll have a completely chilled bottle. So Wait, just in again? case you forget to chill your bottle. Say it again. So if you ever forget to chill a bottle yeah. of white or a bubbly, you can take a wet paper towel, wrap it around the base of the bottle, stick it in the freezer for about 15 minutes, pull it out, and you have a completely chilled bottle. That is impossible. It's so <laughs> try I believe it. you. I believe try. you. I really totally like it. that's amazing. Like Here. this is not even cold. You could do it with this. You could try it. Let's try. Um, did you get Chardonnay? Did you want to try this? Yeah, I do. Sorry. Um, <laughs> And don't feel like, multitasking here. And also, everybody, don't feel like you have to. Um, if there's a wine that you particularly don't enjoy, and there will be, I promise you, there'll be something maybe that you don't enjoy because this is not, a, you know, this is a wine tasting. You're not meant to like unless you're you like everything. Did you say the still and it's okay? Yes, yeah, the still yeah. What do we okay. do with it? Yeah. So you can either you have two options. You can either dump it in the sink, or if you're friendly with someone, you can find your favorite. <laughs> Dump bucket and make them your dump bucket. And, yeah. Okay. I one time went wine tasting and my friend was named the dump bucket. Oh, so, yeah. The dump bucket. Because you, you know, you're tasting things that you've never had, maybe, or maybe you don't particularly like. But I would highly recommend if you say that you don't like a certain type of wine to try it anyway because you might surprise yourself. This is the okay. Silton Mango and Ginger. Yeah, so that's what pairs well with this one or the Manchego. Did anybody try it with both and try like sipping it over top and see if that made a difference in the wine? Is this the Manchego? Oh, yeah, that's the Manchego. No? Let's try this. Definitely give it a try. There you go. See what you think. Does anybody want to block it? I mean, I'll be your dump bucket, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be my dump bucket? Okay, I don't want to be everybody's dump bucket. Well, you live here. You're not driving. I know, but you know what? I woke up with a horrible migraine. I will spare you the oh. gory details. Don't you hurl? <laughs> okay. So the next one that we're going to try is going to be our Vintner Rose. And then oh, you're fine. <laughs> but before we do that, I just want to give you some other ideas of um, actually, we're not going to do the vintner today. We're going to do the Pinot Grigio because that's right in front of me. Um, so we're going to do the Pinot Grigio next. Okay. So the vintner do, Pinot do Grigio. Do not knock it out? Um, if you want to, you don't, you don't have to. This is the one that you're going to want to try the prosciutto with um, and any citrus fruit. So you have oranges on the table. You have prosciutto on the table. I would recommend trying one of each and see what you think because you might like one over the other. Okay. So this one here is our Pinot Grigio. Okay. Another cool thing that I love about our bottles is that they are twist off, so it makes them nice and easy. Um, this is ripe stone fruit with notes of like floral and citrus zest. Um, those of you, does anybody cook with wine? I know, um, I know Jen does a little bit. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook with wine? Well, sauce, I definitely do like a red sauce, I definitely throw whatever red wine I have going in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, red wine. Yeah. Really put this on. Red wine and sauce. Um, I know. I some on my pork loin to my fried rice. Okay. Put it in the oven. <laughs> and then, um, Jen, you said you did what? Like a cape? Chicken piccata. Chicken piccata. She made chicken piccata. Nice. Oh. We used to do a grigio blend there. It was when? amazing. It's like my favorite. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. We devoured it. Awesome. So chicken piccata would be good with um, the Pinot Grigio. You could also do lemon chicken. Really, you know, any chicken dish I would say would go really well with this one. Um, I really love the Stilton cheese. Just want to read the back of our bottles just so you have an idea of what you're getting with our wine. This is just nice. If you also if you're gifting. It says, made with love from California's finest grape growing regions, our wines give hope to meaningful causes around the world by sharing this wine and helping provide greater access to food, water, health, and education, both locally and globally. 
Together we will nourish the future for generations to come. So that really is their mission to nourish the future um, yeah, through wine. Okay, so hopefully you have your uh, orange and you have your prosciutto. No, you're not getting that. So again, is our vintner Pinot Grigio, and I'm gonna go ahead. Is it okay to pour? Wait, so you said prosciutto, orange, and what else? It's prosciutto and orange. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So it's kind of fun because we have so many different sizes of wine glasses here. So. <laughs> I'm not sorry. And this is going to be your driest white. This is a dry, crisp white. Okay. So the Chardonnay is off dry. This is going to be your dry. Do you want to try this, please? I'm like the only person. I like the dry. We saw people on Zoom. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Usually. Um, but on the lines of our. Um, <laughs> We also have a Sauvignon Blanc. So I don't know if anybody loves Sauvignon Blanc. I personally do. It's, it's guava, lemon, lime. Um, it's a really good base. I just made a really awesome uh, fall sangria. It was a apple cider sangria. And in that was our Vintner Sauvignon Blanc, caramel, honey, <coughs> oranges sliced um, in circles, apples sliced in circles, green apples. And you just let that kind of marinate overnight. So good. And I've actually, I did put a little bit of apple cider in there. Um, so that was a really, really good. You could rim your glass with cinnamon sugar again, but it's a really good, I just think it's so much fun. Um, you could also add like caramel vodka into that too to make it you know, a little bit more fun too. Um, but you tried the hospitality Chardonnay. We also have a Vintner Chardonnay. If you like a drier Chardonnay, we have the Sonoma Reserve Chardonnay. Um, which is in a really gorgeous bottle. It has gold, gold foil on it. It's really pretty. Um, and then we have our Vintner Pinot Grigio right now. And so this will kind of give you an idea of where your wine stand in relation to sweet to dry. Do you have the stilt in it? Holy uh -huh. I love that. Good. Good. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that one. Huh? I will after. <laughs> Um, I'm not a fan of Is that. anybody, does anybody love Moscato for whites? Just Moscato. So we do have, yeah, I know I mentioned, <laughs> no, I know I mentioned we have a sparkling Moscato, but we also have a regular Moscato. Too. So what's, what's about, tell me what the Moscato is. Did I get the Pinot Grigio? Oh, did you? Oh, it's not like dessert sweet. It's, it's um, um, nectarine. Ooh, yes. Do like you want to read it for everybody? Is. Usually a light the next morning, like orange blossom, like 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 candy, orange, lemon drop. I'm like, it's candy, orange, lemon drop. I'm like, it's definitely the sweetest light that we have. Okay. I would try that. Or you're not trying, right? We're not trying. Oh, Scott. But I wanted to share that we have this style. The kind of like that's gonna like but not sparkling. No, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be this is the moscato. But we do have we do have a sparkling moscato too. So if you want a sparkling, if you still want it to be bubbly but sweet, then you can do the sparkling moscato or just the plain moscato. Yeah. Yeah. And most people, if you love sweet, most people like Moscato. Okay. Um, so that little table, that little tent over there, the little frame, that shows our um, special for the month. So I usually like to tell you what the specials are prior to like getting to the end of the tasting because by that point we've tried a lot of wine um, <laughs> and I'll remind you. Um, so with um, each purchase that you make, I wrote it on the bottom of your tasting note sheet. So you do get 5% off of any four bottles, 10% off of any six bottles and 20% off of any 12 bottles. You can mix and match anything you want into your cases for a pause. That way you get half price shipping. So it's $10 flat rate shipping. And like I said before, about half your purchase is giving back. To the One Hope Foundation, we are owned 501c3. So we give back to health, um, education, clean water, and um, health, hunger, health, I'm sorry, water, hunger, health, and education. And then 10% is going back to the nonprofit that we chose. Um, in addition to that, when you purchase any six bottles of wine, 
you can get a free pack on sale for half off. And that changes monthly. This month it's our hospitality Pinot Noir, our Vintner Moscato. So it's Moscato that many of you say that you like if you like sweet wine. And then also the sparkling group that you started with, the one that we turned into mimosas and we do lots of fun things with. So you can get up to two of those packs for half off with any six bottle or more purchase, okay? So I just like to point that out. Um, so we are actually um, done with the whites and we're gonna go on to rosé, okay? So I'm gonna leave this one. You know, actually, let's put this in the chill. It's everyone's favorite so far. Yeah, what do you like? I think I liked the blue so far. The first number one. <laughs> yeah, taste it, it, Tina. So good. Wasn't it good? Taste it. Yeah. Good. Okay. People love the spark. The it's really good. Which which yeah. one yeah. is the which one is the thing that you get hot right? Okay. It's on um right there, and I also oh, wrote it down at the bottom of the table. Oh, yeah, she you. for you. Oh, so you can have that to so look at. It. Yeah. <laughs> But the, they're actually pictured on there. So you get the sparkling root that we tasted, the Moscato that you want to try, and <laughs> the hospitality, um, you know, Noir with any six bottles. All right. So next we have the rose. Who likes frozen slushy drinks? Oh, yeah. Oh, I do. <laughs> So if you, like, <laughs> if you like frozen slushy drinks, you can turn the rosé into a frosé. Oh, so frosé frozen. Frozen. Right so, is a frozen slushy rosé drink. You can take a um, really like any sort of um, ice cream. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could do that with that too. That's a great idea. Ice cream maker. Yeah. <laughs> the ice cream maker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can take, we could uh, do that. I could get that out. <laughs> do you have a uh, limoncello? No. Okay. Oh. I'm plum out. Do you have <laughs> do you <laughs> watermelon? Okay. Let's You've see. got the figs and the dates. But no lemoncello. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a rogue watermelon. <laughs> so the way that you make rosé, there's two ways to make it. You can take an ice cube tray, or in this case, maybe your your ice cream maker, and you would just freeze the rosé. Then you'd pop it in a blender with a little bit of limoncello and simple syrup. You blend it up, garnish it with either strawberries or watermelon. It's so good. Okay. Or you can make a watermelon rosé. So Simply Brand juices, which is the juices that I use a lot of times, they've got like mango peach and orange and apple steak, everything. Um, they have a watermelon juice. So you would, in place of the limoncello, you would put the watermelon juice and garnish it with watermelon. That's a watermelon rosé. It's like the perfect summer thing, okay? So that's really fun to do. Um, so for this one here, this is our Vintner rosé. This one is going to be an off dry rosé. It's not going to be super sweet, not super dry either. It's notes of watermelon, strawberry, bing cherry, and blood orange. So it's a really pretty color, okay? Um, this one, I think we wrote down to put, um, I want to say it was Manchego. Um, let's see, it can be paired with anything, lemon, cured ham, manchego, or brie, like a triple cream brie. So you could do the manchego with a brie with this one. Um, that would be really good. Do the manchego. Manchego. That's the first one. So just imagine this one like on a nice hot day, frozen drink. Okay. Yeah, are the instructions by the making a frozen thing somewhere? <laughs> we on our blog, we oh, have good. we have a ton of recipes. Or just come over to Jack's and she'll have and a sit by the pool in the summer and we'll sip our That's rosé. a whole other party, you guys. Like, yeah, it okay. is. Pool side tasting. Pool side we have tasting. a in-ground pool. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. oh there you go. Yeah. I am. Yeah, what did you say, Manchego? One of my favorite themes to do is friends and frosé. Or sangria and sips. That's my my favorite summer. And sleepover. Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite things. One of my absolute favorite themes to do is is PMS. I mean, <laughs> and it stands for PJs, mystery tasting, and small bites. So what I do is I take, I have them actually in the other room. They're like little tags that you put over bottles and it's a mystery tasting. So you taste six wines, you have a tasting note sheet, you write down what you think that they are. And I tell you what to pair it with. And then I reveal it in the end of the day. 
We so. used to do that. My girlfriend used to do wine tasting, and we'd all bring two of the same sweet. bottle. Oh, fun. Yeah, and then so we'd cool. wine test all right. of it. Uh, and they they make a note. So yeah. whoever yeah. had the most, they got to take the rest of the case. Oh and then oh but goodness. the person that lost, we would hand them back the bottle kind of way one That's the best idea. So you have to make sure one like two of you are kind of somewhat sober so you can tell them like yeah. It'd be fun to do that with like one hope wines and then non one hope wines and see if you can figure out which one of you like the best. That'd be fun too. So while you're all um, finishing up your rosé, I just wanted to share with you, we do have gift boxes too. Um, this one here shows our celebration gift set. That's a sparkling bottle um, stopper, a two of our glasses, um, confetti, and then sweet and salty popcorn. Um, so you can add the, these gift sets onto any of your purchases and you can add as many up to 10 of them as you want onto an order. We have one for pets. We have one for um, sweet lovers um, snacks. And then we have an artisan cheese and crackers and things like that. So just makes it a really nice way to easy way to give. Do you ship these to people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you can do is you can individually ship. We can ship to most states. Delaware, depending on the state, there are certain states that we can't ship to. We can't ship to Delaware. We can't ship to Rhode Island or Utah. Um, Alaska. <laughs> so there's certain states that we can't ship to, but most of them we can. Um, and wine does get delivered to your door in three to five business days. So when I tell you this, I'm honestly like telling you the truth. Like one hope is like the ice cream truck for like women <laughs> for adults. Like it's the ice cream truck for adults because it's the best thing when FedEx comes to your door and you've got I mean, us people feel that way. Yeah. So FedEx pulls up and we're getting oh, yeah. a <laughs> yeah so it's it's a good time so it does come pretty quick um you do have to sign for it so whatever you do purchase you have to be able to sign for it um but ways to kind of you know overcome that if you're not home you can ship to any fedex pickup location so any walgreens is usually a fedex pickup location um any fedex office your neighbor that might be always around um <laughs> We I and say, can you ship it to a small yeah, you can. You can okay. ship it to a business. Um, luckily, you can. Yeah, you're not. Um, luckily, we live in a state where we don't have a crazy limit on wine. Like our our wine case limit is thirty six cases, full cases a year. Wow. Thirty six full bottle cases a year per per person. Wow. Right. There are some states. Uh, my friend lives in Jersey, actually, and she actually went over her limit. Um, so she <laughs> hasn't shipped her case to me. So she buys from me literally monthly, but there's some months where she's taken advantage of and bought more than a case. But she can go to the liquor store. Right, but shipping wine to your address. I know, but like that's funny how yeah. you count them to all different. They can only do well because so areas. you can what you can do is then start to ship it to different people. You know, like you can ship it to your mom or your <laughs> brother, whatever. So. Yeah, so that would sometimes happen, but here in Pennsylvania, I can tell you the 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 you know the FedEx driver comes to my house a couple times a week, and not it's not all for me obviously, but it's for mm -hmm. hosts and. You know, different things, nonprofits. Um, so I have not hit that limit yet. So we're if I haven't hit that limit, you'll be <laughs> yes. Um, that is the benefit from doing what I do, right? Pop off, pop off. Um, so last night I made a sangria, and I like to show this because I like to show ways to take a dry wine and make it sweet. So this was made with our hospitality um, red blend, which is on the table over there. Um, all I did for this, and there's several different ways you can make sangrias, but all I did for this one in particular was half cranberry juice, half red wine. It could be any red wine. Um, I put red apples and green apples just because it's faster, right? To do both. And then I just put a cinnamon stick in here. That's it. Okay. The one I made the week before was a little bit different. I put honey in there. I put, um, half, um, apple cider, half cranberry juice. I put triple sec. And then I put the red wine. 
Okay, so that's it was just a little bit more flavorful. Um, but yeah, give this one a try. It's made with our red blend. Um, this one here is ripe raspberry, clove, allspice, and cocoa. Um, this red blend is a 97 point award winning red blend. I said to you before that a lot of our wine is award winning. Um, sparkling root was that you tried. This one is the cab is, um, we have several award winning wines and not to say that more of our wines wouldn't be award winning. It's just, they've been submitted to get awards. So if you ever walk into the liquor store and you see that wines are rated out of hundred, our wines really rate right up there in the top rated wines. You just can't get them at the liquor store. <laughs> so I'll let you try this. Um, after this, you might want to rinse your glass because you're definitely going to have more of a sweet flavor to your wine and we're getting into dry wines. So if you don't like something that is dry, this is definitely an easy way to switch it up a bit and turn it into something completely different. And this has been kind of marinating overnight. So the more you extra good. Yeah, the more you let it Yeah, the more you let it sit a little bit. You trying to not ruin them. Yeah. Yeah, and the best part of it is is the fruit point you have to eat it. Oh my god. So really, really easy what to make. Is this again? What am I having? Red wine. It's, it's juice. juice. This is <laughs> juice. juice. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's fine. This oh, is man. made with the hospitality red blend. Honestly, I've made it with all of our reds. Um, you could there are so many sangria recipes to make with reds and whites. Um, but like I said, we have a, a huge selection of sangria recipes on our site. This is one, honestly, that I've been making for years. It's not a one health recipe. It's just something that I've always done. Just, you know, a, you can change the ratio up a little bit. It was actually an old Weight Watchers recipe, honestly, that I <laughs> changed. <laughs> no, it was. Um, but the ratios were definitely different than what I was doing. <laughs> Weight Watchers ratios were like a quarter red wine to three quarter of cream. You know, it was, it was like more like half and half, but I tend to just do more of like a splash of cranberry. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but you can add different liquors to it too. The one I made before is a triple sec. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but there, oh, it's at the bottom. So there's a cinnamon stick there. And the old recipe, I actually never even had a cinnamon stick. I would just sprinkle cinnamon right into the glass. So I wouldn't do it in the recipe, but when I was ready to serve it, I would just top it off with a little cinnamon. It makes sangria so good. It really does. The cinnamon. So what's, what's, yeah. what's your mix again? So this one was half cranberry juice, half red wine. Yeah. Red apples, green apples. In the summertime, I have strawberries. And then just cinnamon. And I use the cinnamon stick and let it sit in, in here overnight. But if you're just doing it like as is, I just mix it up as I need it. And then I just sprinkle some actual cinnamon on my glass. Um, and just be careful the whole thing doesn't just fall in because I've done that before where you end up with a mound of cinnamon in your glass. Um, yeah, that's not so good. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a really easy recipe. The other fun thing that you can do with red wine is to make a spritzer. So you would take um, sparkling berry water and any red wine and you would mix it about half and half and then take frozen mixed berries and just fill your glass with frozen mixed berries just like ice cubes and that's it. So that just lightens up red. So if you're sitting here saying, man, I don't really like red wine, but you love the sangria, you do like red wine. <laughs> you just have to change it up a little bit, right? So it's just a nice cocktail to have, um, a great thing to serve at a holiday dinner. Um, I think so. Or maybe when you've had just too much of your bottle and you need something a little bit lighter, <laughs> then you can switch to the sangria. Okay. Did you, you want to try it? I, I oh, you got it. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, so you might either, and the best part about sangria is eating the fruit at the end. Um, you may, you can dump it. And what I would honestly do is rinse your glass because now you're going to have all that sugar in there. Um, so if you'd like to rinse your glass, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, or you can just leave it in there. That works too. But if you want to taste, you know, what red blend actually tastes like. Does anybody want me to rinse their glass? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm here. 
<laughs> so we do have um, several red ones. Now we're getting into the reds. The reds are definitely, there's a lot of reds. Um, and what's really cool to do is what's called a vertical tasting. Has anybody, has anybody ever done that before? <laughs> so a vertical tasting is where you take all of one varietal of wine and you just put them side by side and you try them all. So like, let's say you had four different red blends. You would just put them in order of, you know, lightest to heaviest, coldest, and you would try them and see which one you like. And you could do that with our red blend. You could do that with Pinot Noir. You could do that with our cabs. We have about three or four of each of those. Um, so really fun. Okay. Thank you. Um, now you're going to want to get a brownie. <laughs> Oh, darn I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to force you, definitely have the brownie. Okay. <laughs> do you want a brownie? No. Mm -hmm. Can I have another? Well, you uh, can have my brownie. Uh -oh. Okay. Just pull it out the middle. So, red blend. Is going to uh, pair really well with the Gouda. Wow. Okay, so, that so if you haven't had Gouda, if you want to try cheese with it, try the Gouda. Um, so red blend and Gouda, aged Gouda. I always say that the nuttier cheeses, the harder cheeses pair really well with the reds, and then like the softer cheeses are going to pair well with your bubblies and whites. Okay, so just a little tip. Um, again, this one's ripe raspberry, clove, and allspice. Um, this one is one of uh, many of our red blends. We do have a Vintner red blend, which is our core red blend. That's a 96 point award winning red blend. This one's 97 points. And then we even have a reserve red blend. So it, you can really run the whole gamut of being you know, a little bit lighter and then getting really, really bold. Okay. Um, but I'd like to say our red blends are the perfect pizza, pasta, barbecue type wine. <laughs> Your everyday drinking red. Um, our red blends are <laughs> a blend of Merlot, Cab, and Zinfandel. Okay, so if you like Merlot, Cab, and Zinfandel, and you like them blended together, I love red blends. I'm definitely a huge red blend fan. Um, it's just a little bit of everything all blended together. So um, this one I love pairing with brownies. Anything with red and chocolate. Always a good time. <laughs> so, yes, so this is what made your sangria. So just to give you an idea. Do you, do you, do you want to use the air? Oh, are we going to do aerated and not aerated? Or air, not yeah, aerated. we can do that. Are you sure? Oh, that's such a big difference. That's not bad. So I'm going to try to make these a little bit lighter. So that was a, a good suggestion that we had to try aerated and not aerated because Hamper Chef sells an aerator. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm, that Gouda cheese is yum. It is, but it's, it's, it's so Gouda. It's about gone. <laughs> there's a little more over here. Can I get you something else? Like that you've By the way, the Gouda is a thousand day aged. Mm. Really? Wow. Not a thousand yeah. and one? One thousand, <laughs> just one thousand. <laughs> When did you buy that? Today. <laughs> so oh. pay attention a little bit to the wine. <laughs> We're going to try it aerated oh. as well. Okay. Just so you can see the difference there, but try that. Are you ready? And so as far as red blends are considered, this one is a little bit bolder than our Vintner red blend. So if you want something that's a blend, but just N not as bold, oh, then do the bit of red blend. That really, like, which, which red never did there's a little like, especially the wine over it. Changes it, right? It really did. It just made the chocolate it taste it. so much more. Hmm? Yeah, like vibrant, right? <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Right. And that's because there's cocoa. There's the pairing suggestion. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's a really the good profile is cocoa. So if you're if you're you know combining those together, it's gonna bring out that cocoa in the wine, right? <laughs> so the Vintner collection is the labels that you see that have our vineyard on it. So that's the cab that you're going to try next. So anything that you see um, that's on the first page of this here, where you see the actual winery on the label, that's our Vintner, our core so collection of wine. Is, is it's just a collection of wine that we have. And then we have the hospitality collection, which is the one with the mountains on them. 
And then we have reserves, which are black label bottles. Um, so it's just different collections of wine. I know the opener is the there's different different types of wine that they use for specific There's different types of grapes. Um, no, it's just it's just the yeah, it's just the varietal and it's that collection of wine. So it's that um vintage. Right. So the vintage is the year that it was made. So it's a collection of grapes that create this bottle. And then they might use a different blend of grapes to create the reserve yeah. bottles, mm -hmm. which is just a little bit more complex and flavor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, yeah. Usually, are they, have are the reserves call. usually just a wine creamy? Or a or a wine. Not always. Um, eight. 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 Yeah. No, not always. Like we I just have a couple of glasses right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. I've been to, I haven't been to Napa, but I've been to the uh, yeah, nice. oh, oh, yeah. 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 I think yeah. I've been yeah. to a couple of years ago yeah. for my girlfriend's. Oh, fine. She has some in the yeah. yeah. This is delicious. This is delicious. So the red blend that you're trying right now, we're going to try it aerated as well. Um, but this is considered a medium body bread. Okay. So this one here, um, the Vintner Pinot Noir, if anybody likes Pinot Noirs, that's the lightest red. So if we had the Pinot Noir here, I would definitely recommend if you like Pinot Noirs, try our Pinot Noirs. But if you had it in a glass, it would be very light in color. Um, they don't leave the skins on the grapes as long for Pinot Noirs. Pinot Noir is actually considered the spice rack of wines. You get that cinnamon flavor a little bit from the barrel that you're you're tasting from. Um, so we do have a Vintner Pinot Noir. We have a Hospitality Pinot Noir, which is similar to this Hospitality Red Blend. And then we have a Monterey County Reserve Pinot Noir. So that's a fun vertical tasting for you. Um, and then the Vintner Red Blend, which I said is the core collection of Red Blend under this one is, is bold, but those are all your medium bodied reds. Um, so we're gonna try this aerated. Um, do you think you're yeah, aerated? Right <clears throat> now, when you use yours, do you stick it in the bottle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, just like that. I'm always like afraid that I'm gonna pour it it's in the good. whole bottle. Gonna... No, <laughs> so you don't have to put it into it. You can't keep it right here. Mm -hmm. You shove it in the bottle. So I'm just gonna give you a little. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't know you, but. Didn't one of the either the figs or the dates also go with this? Um, yeah. Let me check. I can check. So try this. Just a little bit different. Taste how what you think. Yeah. About it being uh, the Figs go. Oh wait, no red blend. It would be the dates. Yeah. So those the dates are on that end. Oh good. I never cut them. Perfect. Well, that was the wrong pairing. <laughs> just the wrong thing. Or just take do. a piece of chocolate. <laughs> we are going to be using the peanut butter cups for the cab, so well, hold true. off on that one. Sorry. Unless you want multiple, which is totally fine. Well, well, it puts air into the wine. It makes the flavors come out. Okay, mm -hmm. so well, I, I don't know. It makes the flavors come out. So yeah, so usually it does make it a little bit lighter. Um, so the difference yeah. when you're using an aerator, like lots of times they'll say, let your wine breathe, right? So typically when I'm, and I don't always do this because I just want to start drinking it, but if you wanted to let it breathe, what you could do is just open the bottle and just let it sit out. And sometimes people will have a decanter where they'll let, you know, let the wine sit out and breathe. But this is what an aerator does. It does it for you. So it, it makes that process happen immediately. And only for red wines. Okay. They might do it for white. Okay. No, you're not supposed to. I think it's the tannins. That well, I was at a party. Yeah, I, I actually did a charcuterie white, board party yeah. last week, and they were all like, I do it for my white too. It makes such a huge difference. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never done it. Like, oh, I, can't I, can't I mean, life. you could really do it for anything. Whatever is best for it's you and your taste, you can do it for anything, right? Sure, everybody's going to be annoyed when I put ice in my yeah, <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes people will refrigerate red. I don't refrigerate red, but you know, that's another one of those personal preference kind of things. Okay, so for our cab, I know you're still drinking the um, the red blend. What do we think about an aerated versus not? What did we like better? I can tell the difference, it's not as biting. 
Yeah. It smooths it out a little bit. And sometimes people like it smoother, but sometimes people like that little bite. And I like the little bite. So. Yeah, I don't like that one, but now that I know how to do it, I'm able to do that. But I can I can take more of it like full body, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting. And I do have a lot of people like this red that red blend is bolder than our vintner red blend. So lots of times when I'm pairing the red blend the other red blend with the brownies, it will transition someone that says to me I don't like red wine and they'll be like wait a minute but with chocolate. Mm -hmm. it's completely different right? right so then they're like oh maybe i do like red blood <laughs> um yeah just, like chocolate, just because you know you're pairing it differently um so we're gonna go um into our last wine this one right here is our vintner cab okay so this is the vintner collection wine this is the vintner cab this is a full body red um i think that this is one of my favorites um I love cabs though, so I'm just partial to cabs. Um, but this is our Vintner Collection cab. This is an award winning wine as well. Um, we have a hospitality cab that looks very much like that red blend with the mountain bottle. Um, we also have a Casa Robles cab, uh, which is a gorgeous bottle. I love our hospitality cab. Um, that is my favorite wine that we have out right now. Um, but my husband and I, don't drink it as often because it's a little bit more expensive, but we use it for a nice, you know, nice dinner, whatever it is that we can be alone, which is never. <laughs> um, yes. So it looks like this, but isn't it pretty though? Like it has yeah. this gold foil. Um, and the Monterey County Pinot Noir looks like that too. So it's just, it's a really nice bottle. It's really light um, as far as a cab is considered, I think, but it's, it's bold all at the same time, but it, it's very smooth. Um, so the Paso Robles is a great one to try. Um, we're going to be trying the cab. So you're going to want to do your cheddar and also um, peanut butter cup. So mm -hmm. peanut butter cups and cab go really well together. Um, what is it? It's a pinch of dark berries. Yeah, this one is notes of dark berries, toffee, and hints of vanilla. The one that everybody um, ignores because it's cheddar. I know. Yeah, so make sure you get your peanut butter cups and your cab. And the pigs go with this one too. Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one of the cool recipes that I always tell people about, um, our winemaker, we have an estate in Napa. So not only is there a winery, but you can actually stay there. Um, the investors actually stay there. So there's a lot of celebrity investors that have invested in our winery. And they have, you know, basically rooms there where they stay. So I was just there in September. I earned a trip for two there and I brought my best friend and we had the best time just going around Napa to different wineries and, you know, going, learning more about our wine, and doing our wine tour there and talking with our winemaker and founders. Um, but our, we have an in-house chef and he makes cookies with cab. So he does little mini peanut butter cups, toffee bits and chocolate chips in his cat in his cookies, chocolate chip cookies. And the reason why he does that is because it pairs so nicely with the cab because you already have the peanut butter cups that pair Toffee, you get out of this and chuck chips. So cookies and cab is always a really good, <laughs> good, good pairing, right? Cookies and cab. Um, so give this one a try. I'll give you a little scratch. If you want to try it um, with the aerator, you can do that too. So I'll just start with a little splash just so you can taste it. Definitely do those four S's of wine tasting. You know, so so fun in here with all these lights. Light person. Oh, I just put that on the floor. Let me get that. It's not a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tasty one. Yeah. That's Start my over. favorite. Jen, <laughs> have you seen Megan's room? Uh -uh. Oh, oh, I need to see it too. You really do. Lights. Yeah. So <laughs> the cab is um, the cab is my husband's favorite. It's one of my favorites too. Um, we do besides offering these normal discounts on wine, we do a wine club. So I don't know if any of you are wine club members for any other winery. 
um, but it is the best type of club to be a part of <laughs> the, the wine club. Um, a lot of people do subscriptions for all sorts of things, right? So people do like, you know, food subscriptions and shoes and clothes and gym. yeah, gym things, makeup, <laughs> all, all kinds of work. things. Um, <laughs> so you want to try this one? It is good. Yeah. So this one, um, so with our One Hope Wine Club, um, we offer extra discounts. So you get the same discounts, the 5% off of four bottles, 10% off of six and 20% off of 12. But instead of $10 flat rate shipping, you get free shipping on every single order that you make as long as it's four bottles or more. So all year round, you can literally, you know, just get free shipping on your wine. And then the difference between One Hope besides the give back component to it um, is that we actually pay you back for your wine purchases. So as a wine club member, as a normal customer, you get 5% back on any purchase that you make. Um, and that's in the, in the form of reward points so that you can use that towards future free wine. With the wine club, you get double reward points back. So instead of 5% back, you get 10% back. So you just started to mine free wine. So if that's not a benefit to joining the wine club, I don't know what is, but if you at least drink one bottle a month, and everyone usually laughs when I say one bottle a month. Um, so um, yeah, if you drink one bottle a month, you can do the wine club four bottles every three months. And that averages out to be a little bit more than a bottle a month, which I don't know who doesn't drink that if you're a wine drinker. Um, and yeah, and what's nice is you can change the bottles in your shipment in between shipments and you can use your wine club points for free wine in between shipments too. Okay, so and give back all year round with your wine. Um, um, so that is, does anybody want to try it aerated? I do. Because mm -hmm. I do have another aerator here. Yeah, I usually like it both ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did anybody try it with the fig? <laughs> so my husband is a wine club member just for the cab. And then, so he has his own wine club and then I have a curated wine club. So we also um, offer a curated wine club that's done by our winemaker, Mari Wells Coyle. So she selects the wine in that um, club. So if you're more of an adventurous drinker, um, then um, that would be the, the set for you. Oh, no, sorry, I'm going. Oh, you got a little extra. What will? <laughs> Lucky you. Bonus. Um, yeah, so that is your six wines. So what we're going to do now, um, you basically have, you know, this is like an open bar. So you can go back and you can retry anything that you want. You can have sangria. You can make mimosas. Um, I will set all the wines up there. I'm going to stop the recording on um, there. And then um, I do have, there are a couple things up here you can look at if you want to take um, holiday cheer gift tags, you can if you plan on gifting any of your bottles. Um, over, where did I put it? On the table somewhere I had order forms, I believe. Um, so if you want to fill out one of those, you can. Quite honestly, I just put orders right in on my phone. Um, I recommend looking at the little ring, um, little booklets that I have around because that literally has everything that we carry and it's up to date. It gives you the tasting notes of each wine. I would encourage you to be a little bit adventurous. Um, if you like certain wines, give you know, other wines a try um, and think about gifts and think about you know, any holiday celebrations that you might need. Um, I'm happy to help you guys with your orders. Continue to try some of the pairings that we had tonight. That dessert board looks like it hasn't even been touched. <laughs> you have a whole lot of dessert. You know to start. Oh my goodness. You got into it. Honestly, I can try guys. You really got into it. We are having an after party. So yeah. yeah. So keep on eating and drinking. Right? Really? I may try the caramel. Lunch yeah. Lunch. I'm going to try some things too. Oh, yeah. These are right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, turn the recording off for our friends Stop. who oh, might be here. I have so much fun at all. Did you realize it was the end?